Okay, so let's take a look at question three from the 2011 scholarship paper. There's quite a lot to it, so I'm just going to do part A separately from part B. Um, part A, we're looking at a mixture containing oxalic acid, which is also known by its IUPAC name, which is ethan dioic acid or ethan 12 dioic acid. It's basically ethane, which has two carboxylic acid groups either end of it. Um, and you must be aware that both of those hydrogens will be lost as this um, acid um, deprotonates in water. The next compound you have is sodium oxalate, which is the source of oxalate ions, C2O42 minus. And you should remember them for level three redox chemistry. The redox partner of that is carbon dioxide gas. So that's important to remember. And the water soluble impurity that does not react with solutions of sodium hydroxide or potassium permanganate. To determine the composition of the mixture, 2.496 grams of the mixture was dissolved in water to give 100 ml of solution. So we'll call this 100% um, mass. All right, so that will be an important figure to come back to towards the end of the question. In test one, five mils of the solution was titrated with that concentration of acidified potassium permanganate solution and needed 23.35 mils to reach the equivalence point. So this is a redox titration. So that's a redox titration, and we'll uh, refer to that as the first um, reaction, so equation or test number one. In another test, 10 mils of the solution was titrated with that concentration, 0 0.1040 moles per liter sodium hydroxide solution, and needed 17.30 mils to reach the equivalent point. So this is an acid base titration. And that's going to be titration. That's going to be our second test. And then you're also given uh, the molecular masses of um, oxalic acid and the molecular mass of sodium um, oxalate. And I'm just going to change this to um, the molecular mass for oxalate ions because they're the ones we're interested in. Sodium, we can call that a spectator ion. And therefore, uh, we have the molar mass of oxalate is going to be um, 134.0 grams per mole. Subtract two sodiums from that, which is equivalent of um, 46 grams per mole. And that gives you a molar mass um, or molecular mass for oxalate ions of 88 grams per mole. So we have all our information together there. So we're going to take a look at these individual tests. And I'm just going to um, use a different page to lay this out. So in this first test, we're looking at a redox titration of oxalate ions by acidified permanganate. And um, so we need to lay down our redox half equations first of all. So our oxalate is C2O42 minus. And the redox partner of that is carbon dioxide. And then the other equation we have is permanganate going to Mn2+. plus. we balance these equations out, we get um, two CO2. So balance the non-oxygen and hydrogen atoms first. That's very important. And then that simply needs to just add two electrons to balance the charges there. So negative two and negative two. So that's your oxidation half equation. Oxidation half equation. Then the permanganates, this is a classic, you see this many times. So um, we add four uh, waters here. Then we have plus eight H plus. And then you also have five electrons. We just stick them all there. So that's your reduction half equation. And then we need to balance these equations out by factorizing the electrons. So we multiply this by five, multiply this by two. And then those equations become, so you get five oxalate, 10 CO2, 10 electrons. And down here we get 10 electrons. We get um, two permanganate, 16 H plus, um, two Mn2 plus, and eight H2O. So the final equation is five oxalate ions. Five moles of oxalate ions will react with um, two moles of permanganate, which is what we need to know. And um, plus our 16H plus, your electrons would have cancelled with each other right there. Uh, going to 10CO2 plus 2MN2 plus and plus 8H2O. Okay, so we have that equation. And uh, this equation is invaluable to us because it tells us that five moles of oxalate ions will react with two moles of permanganate ions. 
So the next thing we want to determine is from this titer, we're given how many moles of permanganate do we have in the titer? That's the next question. And so we're going to use our concentration equals moles over volume triangle. And then that will tell us that the moles of permanganate will be equal to its concentration, which was given to us in the question. And we go back to the question here. The concentration of permanganate was 0 0.01803 moles per liter. And the titer needed was 23.35 mils. So we take our um, uh, 0.01803 moles per liter. We multiply that by the titer, which is 0 0.02335 liters. And that gives us moles of permanganate of 4.21005 by 10 to the minus 4 moles. We take that over here now. Well, this mole ratio could be condensed for the condensed to two and a half moles of oxalate ions will react with one mole of permanganate. So if we have 4.21005 by 10 to the minus four moles of permanganate, we should have 1.0525 by 10 to the minus three moles of oxalate. Notice that I'm keeping the accuracy up until the final answer. Um, so just to round this up to match the NCEA answer for the moles of um, oxalate. Now this is the moles of oxalate in total, which which are coming from the, um, the oxalic acid. And they're also coming from the sodium oxalate as well. So we still don't know exactly how many moles of oxalate are just from the acid alone, or how many moles of the oxalic acid that we have, rather. Um, but anyway, the moles in total of oxalate that we have can be rounded from 1.0525, 0.125 by 10 to the minus 3. The NCA guys just round that up to 0 0.02106 moles. So we'll just keep that number. The next thing we want to determine then is what are the moles of just the oxalic acid alone, and then we can um, we can do a subtraction. So the second test, test number two. So for the second uh, test or titration, we have our oxalic acid, which is H2C2O4. It's reacting with sodium hydroxide, and um, you're going to get a salt plus water. So we can put our water in there. And the salt is going to be C2O4 and two sodiums. So this is why it's critical because I originally wrote this equation as just losing one of these protons. Um, but it's a dicarboxylic acid, so it loses both of them to produce two moles of water. And um, therefore, you need two moles of your sodium hydroxide. And that's critical. So the mole ratio of the oxalic acid to your um, sodium hydroxide is 1 is to 2. And that mole ratio caught me out and therefore threw all my numbers out. Um, so then you want to determine the moles of sodium hydroxide that you have in the titer. And that's just simply uh, using this triangle again. So the moles equals the concentration of your sodium hydroxide, which if you look at your question in front of you, you have 0 0.1040 moles per liter. And the titer is given to you as um, 17.3 milliliters, which is 0 0.0173 liters. And that gives you um, 0 0.0017992 moles of sodium hydroxide. So um, you have a situation here where um, half is to one is the mole ratio there for the um, oxalic acid to sodium hydroxide. So if you have um, 0 0.0017992 moles of your sodium hydroxide, you only need half of that for equivalence point um, for the oxalic acid. And that works out to be 8.996 by 10 to the minus four uh, moles. Okay, so you now you have your moles of your um, your oxalic acid in isolation, that can also be written as um, 0 0.008996 moles, and um, just to use what the NCA guys presented as. So we're ready to, to finish this question up. So to finish, 
and get these mole um, fractions, what we need to do is, um, I made, a, made an error there actually, the, the um, 8.996 by 10 to the minus four, um, this has been increased by a factor of 10 because the original um, volume that you used of your um, oxalic acid for the sodium hydroxide titration was only 10 ml. So you need to multiply that by 10 to get the amount in the original uh, 100 ml sample. So that's why it went from 8.996 by 10 to the minus 4 to 8.996 by 10 to the minus 3. So that's important to mention that there. So I kind of skipped over that. And I better go back and just check if I did that for the other one. So for the other situation, the other situation we ended up with um, a point. Yeah, so we did the same thing here as well. So this concentration, or this amount rather, had to be times by 20 because the original volume of your um, oxalate, your sodium oxalate that you used uh, was five mils, and then you had to multiply that by 20 to get the amount in the original um, 100 mil sample. So apologies for skipping over that. I actually forgot about that for a second. So that's how this number became this number. Um, and that's how the 8.996 by 10 to the minus 4 became by 10 to the minus 3. So to finish, um, we have a total moles of oxalic acid, we can say this just based on our second test, was equal to 0 0.008996 moles. And that's from um, test number two. Um, the total moles of oxalate ions can be determined um, from equation two, which was 0 0.02106 moles. And that's from uh, test number one, rather, the um, oxalate permanganate titration. Um, so then the mass of the oxalic acid um, is equal to our 0 0.008996 moles from the second test. Uh, multiply that by its smaller mass, which is given to you as 90.04 grams per mole. And that gives you a mass of 0 0.810 grams. Um, the moles of oxalate ions alone, so just the C2O42 minus, um, this is equal to the uh, total oxalate, which is 0 0.02106 moles, minus the uh, moles of oxalic acid, which is 0 0.008996 moles, and that gives you an answer of 0 0.012064 moles of oxalate ions alone. And then what we want to do is get our mass of oxalate ions, which is equal to our this number now, so 0 0.012064 moles. Um, you want to multiply that by the molar mass of um, just oxalate ions, which we did at the start, is 88 grams per mole. I'll just remind you of that again. Um, so we said that uh, the oxalate, the sodium oxalate, had a total molecular mass of 134 grams per mole, but we're not interested in the sodium spectator ions, so we subtract two sodium ions, which was the total molar mass of 86 grams per mole, and that will give us the molar mass of oxalate ions alone of 88 grams per mole. So that's where I got this number from here. And that will give us a mass of oxalate ions alone of 1.060 grams. So then we look at mass fractions. Hopefully I can fit this in. So the mass fraction, mass fraction of oxalic acid is going to be equal to um, 0 0.0810 grams over the total mass and that we were given at the start, which is 2.496 grams, which is equal to a mass fraction of 0.325. And the mass fraction of our oxalate ions is equal to um, 1.06 grams, 1.060 grams over 2.496 grams, which is equal to a mass fraction of 0.425.
And if you add those two mass fractions up and subtract them from one, um, you get the mass fraction of the remaining impurity, which is 0 0.251. Now, that's the answer to the, that's the three mass fractions for that question. That's the answer. That's the question answered. If we just look at the NCU, um, just be aware that in their equation, they made an error with the um, permanganate oxalate equation. That should be 8, not 24. They also worked out the uh, total moles of oxalate here as 0 0.02160 0 moles. And then um, use the wrong number down here just slightly, but it throws out the numbers a little bit. And then the other thing they did was they did the mass fraction for oxalate and for sodium oxalate. So just be aware that this final answer here comes from the fact that they used um, sodium oxalate and not oxalate ions. If you use this, just oxalate ions, you get um, 0 0.251, like we just wrote for our answer there. Okay, so that's question. Um, Question 3, part A from the 2011 paper, and we'll take a look at question B in a separate video.